Welcome, everyone, to another episode of The Candy Show. I'm your host, Candy. We have a very special guest in the building. Guys, first of all, let me make sure I tell you the rules. The rules are make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page, and that is capital C in the number two at the end. That's Candy Productions 2, capital C in the number two at the end, Candy Productions 2. Make sure you are following the Instagram page, and that is Candy Talk Show. You guys know we have a website. Did you know that? Go ahead, visit www.candyproductions2.biz. So guys, thank you so much for coming back for another episode. I have a very special guest. I'm actually going to switch this up today. I'm going to have her introduce herself, okay? So I'm going to allow my guest, the floor, to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Christine Dobbo Mabbitt, uh, DJ Dobbo, known as, and I'm the presenter of the Motown Soul Show and Motown Soul Show and guests on TWR, which is Totally Wild Radio. Well, thank you so much and welcome. Do you mind if I call you Miss Christine? That's absolutely fine, yeah. Thank you so much. Tell me, where are you coming from today? Uh, what city, please... state, or country are you coming from today? <laughs> Um, based in England and it's a place called Surrey and it's about I'd say it's it's about 25 miles from London the city of London we're in the countryside oh wow I've never actually spoke to someone from London so I'm very honored oh my god this is gonna You're be so welcome. Cool. <laughs> it's gonna be so cool. Okay, <laughs> tell me a little bit about London. We have to talk about that first before we go into anything. Uh, London's uh, very nice. It's very good for the music scene. We have many, many venues here where we get a lot of artists, upcoming artists, where they perform their first gigs or extending gigs. And um, yeah, we have, uh, like today, I had a day trip out. We went to the seaside and I literally got back just literally an hour ago. <laughs> so I was really pushing it for time. So luckily the trains were running very well. But um, yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely London. Lots to do, lots of places to see. And also the outskirts of London as well. Well, tell me, what's the time difference? Because right now I'm here in Indianapolis, Indiana, and it is 3 mm -hmm. p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So tell me about the, the time difference there. Uh, you're, we're five hours ahead of you. It's now eight o'clock in the evening. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever visited the United States? No, that is uh, the plan for 2025 is to come over and to meet, obviously, Andre Pitton of F1 Entertainment and me to come and see him. We keep promising that we're going to come out. And obviously, with lockdown with COVID, it is pretty, you know, tough to go anywhere. So our plans for 2025 is to actually come out to the States, come to LA and meet Andre and meet some of the artists and that so that is our plan yeah wow so it's is it still kind of not so great over there right now with COVID tell me a little bit about that are there any traveling restrictions anything going on over there not at the moment it's pretty good um everyone is very cautious very vigilant uh people it's optional whether they wear a face mask and take sanitizer Generally, it's a lot better than what it has been, but people are very, still very cautious. The elderly and vulnerable are still getting vaccinations to obviously protect them who have a weak immune system. But it's quite, it's calmed down quite a lot here. So, uh, which is good because obviously a lot of the music venues and that are able to open up and, you know, start getting bands in, artists and that, get them performing again because the music industry has been affected you know, all companies have been affected through COVID and uh, things are kind of like building up again and getting back to normal. Well, I one day, hopefully I'll get over there. Actually, interesting enough, yeah. before COVID happened, I was actually supposed to go over to London with hmm. a couple of family members. Uh, that would have been my first time visiting someplace that's really like overseas like that. Um, yeah. I 
pretty much have been on a cruise here and there, it's like St. Martin's, you know, in the Caribbean, but I've never been. Mm -hmm. um, so I was going to go then, but obviously COVID hit and it was like, geez. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about how you met Andre. So first of all, let me just make sure I give him a shout out. Thank you so much for Mr. Andre Pittman of Enthrone Entertainment. He connected us together, but I'm yeah. going to let you tell everyone, how did you meet Andre and what is your affiliation with Enthrone Records? Entertainment. Yeah, Ephron uh, Entertainment and Records. Um, basically, I been doing the Motown Soul Show, DJing and presenting my show on various radio stations for nearly 10 years now. And um, what I'd done, I used to sort of like headhunt the artists and stuff like that. And then I got discovered by Greg Hanley of Hanley Entertainment. He contacted me and we were working together and I was doing interviews with certain artists that he put my way. And suddenly he unfortunately passed away. And yeah, and um, yeah, I kind of found out because I was still, I was like trying to message and speak with him on WhatsApp and I was getting no reply. And I found out that he, he passed away in his sleep. So um, Andre contacted me and he wanted me to carry on with the work that I do and asked if I'd be willing to work with him. Like I said, of course yeah love to carry on with the legacy of what I do and um yeah we've been working together ever since and been doing some great interviews with some great artists new and existing artists and keeping the legacy of Motown alive and keeping that heartbeat pumping for Hitsfield well, I tell you what I'm sure you may or may not know I don't know but I am a fan of Motown I am a yeah. 70s baby, but even though I'm a 70s baby, I have grown up on Motown's hits, era, yeah. artists, yeah. history, and mm -hmm. I definitely will continue to support you and try to tune into your platform. Since you're only five hours ahead, that's not a big deal for me. <laughs> and I've had the opportunity to visit the Motown Museum a few times yeah that's on my list that's because they've extended it haven't they at the moment they've spent a lot of money in extending it they did and actually I was very honored a few years back before they even turned it into a museum it was still just the building I had an opportunity mm -hmm. to go there and look through at the time. And when they told me this is where all of the big recordings were in the big studio at the time, and it was just like, oh my gosh, I could mm -hmm. just feel people's spirits in that room yeah. and all of the hits that were made there. And so when I heard that they turned it into a museum several years later, I said, well, the first thing I need to do is when I go to Detroit, hit that museum mm -hmm. so every time I go back to Detroit I hit it last year and um I think it was either the year before that or it, it was last year but definitely prior to COVID um it mm -hmm. might have been 2018 2019 um I hit it then but yeah no matter of fact it was 2019 wow. and then I hit it again last year so no matter what it's so beautiful it's just so ooh, emotional I was going to say, like, it's giving me goosebumps you just talking about because I can imagine the, you know, the feeling when you walk through there, like you mentioned about the souls and, you know, how many souls pass through you with your presence there. You can just feel them, you know, you can smell the history and, yeah, nobody would get it unless you're actually there in presence there in that doorway as you go in. You know, and looking around and that, it's like, yeah, I want to get that experience, what you felt. Oh, well, I hope you do. I definitely hope yeah. it's sooner than 2025, 20, but I definitely hope yeah. you do. It is amazing. And I learn something new mm -hmm. every time when I go. So whew. the one thing that really mm -hmm. got me was coming across Michael Jackson's glove and his hat. I mean, yeah. I posted on social media, but I definitely bawled just to know I was in the presence 
of one, something that he had on his body. So, yeah. You know, as you know, the Jacksons are from Indiana. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, one of my favorite groups. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself, Miss Christine. Let's talk a little bit far back. How long, what, what made you start getting into the fan piece of the industry? Tell me a little bit about your love and what attracted you to that. Uh, well, it is because my husband's a DJ and he was on a radio station, him and his friends, a friend he's grown up for years through school. They do a show together. They did do a show together. And uh, yeah, we're going back 10 years now. And um, of course, his friend can sort of like do the show one evening. And of course, he asked my husband asked me if I could stand in. So I stood in. And while I was there, the station manager said, oh, you know, we've got some slots. Would you be interested in doing a show? And what kind of genre of music would you do? And I said, oh, you know, I'd love to. And it'd be Motown, soul, funk, gospel. And gave it a go and started off there. And uh, from there, we, me and my husband, we kind of wanted to sort of like set up our own station. We'd done that with a friend who sadly passed away last year which was on Working Music Radio, and it didn't feel the same doing it without him. So, um, you know, what we've done now is we've joined independent stations. So I'm on Totally Wild Radio, TWR. So I do the Motown Soul Show, share the passion, the music that I love, sharing, you know, the history and teaching the new generation, the upcoming generation, all about the music and where it all originates from, because that's very important. And what you need to do is like educate them that who the original artist, where that music comes from, because there's too many kind of new tracks and they get snippets of an original track put into it. And you sort of say, well, the original of that is this artist and blah 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 and oh that was it yeah yep. Yeah. and then you play it and they went oh my word you know because they think it's new what they hear but it's not it's a snippet from an original from back in the time so uh yeah it's teaching the generation who those artists are where it originates from why did you pick that type of genre was that was, something that you've always grew up with? Did you grow up with a diverse catalog of music yeah. genres? But that one, tell me a little bit about why that one. I grown up with uh, Motown and Soul, Northern Soul. Uh, when I was at school, I used to wear a pair of shoes, which you call loafers. There were a certain type of shoe which you, you know, used to wear. And a jacket, it's like a Harrington jacket. It's the, the clothes you wear. And at school, people look at you differently. It's like, oh, give it to you know. So it's like, where it all started out. I was, I think I was about 10 years old when I got my first Harrison jacket and a pair of loafers. And it's just hearing the music being brought up through my father playing it, my brother's playing it. And it's all I know. I just love it. Oh, goodness. Well, and yeah, those yeah. Are pe the penny loafers. <laughs> Yeah, and also my um had uh, the vinyl set of the uh Motown story, which had five thirty-three vinyls in a box set. And it was Michael Jackson doing the live interview, I think it was around the age of nine, and all on vinyl and his inspirations of Diana Ross and all the Motown artists. It's called the Motown Story. It's in a it's in a box. Is there anyone that you haven't seen? I take it you attend concerts, correct? Yeah. Yes. Is there any one of the Motown genre that you haven't seen that's still around that you want to go see in concert? Yeah, I'd love to go and see. Um, I'd say I, I would love to go and see Diana Ross. If I had the opportunity to see Diana Ross, I'd love to go and see her. Oh. And also, I would say, let's say the Temptations. Ooh, so let me, uh, you know, yeah. so with Diana Ross with me, when I was younger, my favorite mm. song was Upside Down. Upside oh, Down. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you turn me. I love that one. And then I, as far as the Temptations are concerned, so I have never seen Miss Diana Ross. She yeah. did come to Indianapolis, Indiana, I believe, but unfortunately I wasn't able to attend, but I definitely would love to see her. 
Uh, yeah. Temptations. Now, last year I had the opportunity to actually be in the building to see them wow. perform. And Mr. Mm -hmm. Otis, oh gosh, it's just yeah. like the only original me member left. Yes. Yeah. So I thank God that I had the chance to do that because as yeah. a child, I wasn't ever even thinking I would ever be in the presence of some of the artists, mm -hmm. especially someone as a legend, an icon, as Mr. Mm -hmm. Otis did. So I'm just like, wow. I think he said he was 80, 81 at the time or something like that. And he was still yeah. moving. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the Supremes as well. Sherry and, you know, she say, you know, I interviewed them and, you know, pinch me moments or singing with them to Baby Love and that intro and love to go and see the girls, go and see them as well. Definitely. Yes, because there are the Supremes out. Yeah. And they're also under Enthrone Entertainment, correct? Right. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm 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 gonna say this right now, but I'm gonna say it again. I hope that one day that we're able to meet together because I'm sure we can probably go yep. to a concert and just enjoy ourselves and just act like no one else is around but us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. that's really what I do right now anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, gosh. Now, I'm going to skip to something real quick. Do you ever, um, how do you feel when a lot of Americans tend to try to talk like, an, a, a, tell me, not, how do you, do you guys call yourself Londoners? How do you tell, how do you actually, what's the title that's called that you guys call yourselves? uh english uh, english people tell me i'm i'm educate me for me <laughs> yeah it's like in england it's like it depends on what part of the country in england you come from it's like you've got up north so you've got the northerners you've got down south the, the southerners um you've got the irish in ireland wales the welsh the londoners uh there's like they nickname them the Cockneys, of, you know, if you're Cockney, a Londoner, it's like, yeah, yeah. Do you ever, like, do you ever get offended when people try to act like they're speaking English? No, no, it's quite funny you say that because me and my husband, when we went on a honeymoon, we went to Jamaica, we went to Montego Bay. And we went on the excursion. There was uh, Rastafarians there, and the Rastafarian, you know, speaking, you know, pure Jamaican. And uh, he said, "Oh, please, you know, say I would like a cup of tea." So he said, "Oh, we would like a cup of tea," and he loved it, the accent. So we turned it around. We said to him, "Now you say it," <laughs> and to hear Rastafarian say I would like a cup of tea in like English it it was just quite it was just strange it was so different and yeah. he he laughed he laughed because you know because it to him it was putting on like sounded like a very very posh voice because it was like well spoken it was like her scene out of the Prince of Bel-Air <laughs> you know it's like yeah it yeah it's lovely it was nice yeah, he they were just uh, he was getting us to say all these different words which they don't usually hear. Like um, I think you have for when you put the rubbish out, is it garbage or garbage, garbage or trash? Yeah, trash. like oh, it's just like the rubbish, rubbish, <laughs> the rubbish out. or recycling. You know, we've got the recycling where you do the plastics and the cardboard and stuff like that. But yeah, it's like they were just getting us to say all these different words, and they were just loving it. Well, I have to say, I sometimes make, I try to talk in different voices and for whatever reason, the English accent is what I usually go to because mm -hmm. I can, I, I feel like I can do this, the, the, do that the best. So if you don't mind kind of having a conversation with me in my try to be imitating voice and see in my English voice and see if, if I'm doing it right. <laughs> if you can say, I would like a cup of tea. 
I would love a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> May I yeah, have a cup of tea, please? And toast. Oh, may I have some toast, please? That is brilliant. I love that. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh gosh, um, that is brilliant. so. That's my voice. That is my go-to voice. So sorry. What I can wanted you teach to. Me, though? What can you teach me? Um, I don't know. How about um, what time is it? What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get the accent. <laughs> Gosh, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think I sound a little country? A little bit. Are you, what part are you from? I'm literally from right smack dab in the middle, Indianapolis, Indiana. And that's the thing. I've heard a lot of people say that I sound country. So country for me would be a little Southern, like maybe Tennessee, right. Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and I know sometimes when you talk about other accents, people who mm. are in Illinois, they have Illinois, let me say that correctly. <laughs> Illinois, they have an accent. You can definitely tell that. And then people that are from Missouri, they have an accent. Mm. But I never like I always hear people say that I sound a little country. So it might just be certain words that I sound yeah. uh, that I that I pronounce that. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm sure you've yeah. heard people from Kentucky and Tennessee and even Atlanta, for that matter, like Georgia. Yeah, because sometimes they like we got asked when we were in Jamaica if we were Australian because they say that we sound similar to Australians. But I don't know how that. Yeah, it's. It's kind because of, like Australians kind of uh, their their accent is a little bit stronger. I don't know how to explain it, but we can tell the difference from English to Australian. But in America, we are very similar to Australians because we kept being asked, "Are you from Australia? Are you from Australia?" It's like, no, we're from England. We're from near London, England. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, thank you so much for enlightening me on that and actually. Um, thinking that I was funny and, and it helping me because I thought that was really cool. So I was looking forward to that. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your program. When is it usually on? When can we hear it? Can we tune into it? Is it a visual platform? Let us know about that. Yeah, it's audio. It's uh, Totally Wild Radio. So it's www.totallywildradio.com. And my show goes out on the fourth Sunday of each calendar month. So the show's going out on the 27th. So not this Sunday, it's the following Sunday. And my interview was with the Manhattans. So that was with Gerald Orson, Troy May and Lawrence, who is the new member, uh, nicknamed Wheeze. So he replaced David Tyson, unfortunately, who passed away, who's the brother of Ron Tyson of The Temptations. Uh, so that interview, yeah, that's going out on the 27th, and that is at 1 o'clock till 2 o'clock. And on that show, I'm playing gospel, gospel music. And then in September, I've got an interview with the lovely Mickey Stevenson, who is the co-writer and also who signed the artist and that for Motown. So that's going to be a very good, interesting. And he's obviously released a book, which I'm reading at the moment. So there's going to be a lot of uh, questions asked in that interview. And uh, yeah, so that's going out in September. Nice. So are any of your programs live? Can you listen to them live or is it just pre-recorded and then submitted up? Some are pre-recorded and uh, some are live, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's now, a 24-7 show, yeah. Is there anybody that you want to actually interview? Uh, is there? Do you want to limit yourself or is there someone that you just really absolutely want to make sure that you interview? Um, I would love to get the opportunity to interview Donna Ross, for one, and obviously Barry Gordy. Yeah, because mm -hmm. very good. I think he's 93 now. Yeah, he's definitely in his 90s. Yeah, yeah. He's, I think he's fitter than all of us put together, to be honest. He's, you know, he's doing really well. And, um, yeah, 
he would be the top of the list, Barry Gordy. But to get Mickey Stevenson, you know, I'm happy. You know what I mean? You can't get any nearer in Hitsville and Motown. So, um, but yeah, the doors are open. If it came, if it was approached to me with Barry, yeah, it make my make my day. Tell me a little bit about the difference. Do you have, are you ever conflicted personally, emotionally when you're playing one genre and then turn around and playing gospel? How does that gel? Because a lot of times some people can play both of them because it's their job. Um, some people yeah. only want to focus on one area because of it being obviously secular and, and gospel. Do you gospel have any- is very, very important because a lot of the artists in the Motown scene, the Pittsville, a lot of them, their background all originates gospel from the church, Aretha Franklin, Malcolm Gate, the whole of them. And gospel is a very big part in my life and it's important to get that across. And I love the early gospel. I'm going back to like 1920s, you know. I've got a lot of early gospel music and it's important to teach a generation that it was the gospel it was the church where these artists started out when they were young children teenagers and it was the gospel church and god that got them through to where they are now and where you know their music career went and gospel music to me for instance my husband he was very kind of he was a bit sort of like unsure about gospel music he didn't know how to sort of like take it and we went to a soul weekend uh, and there was the reggae choir there and he heard them and he he was actually crying I looked at him I said what are you doing he says I can't believe it it's got to me it's got me from right inside and he just found it so powerful and emotional. He just couldn't express it other than cry. And it was in his tears. And he said he would never underestimate gospel music. He absolutely loved it. And, you know, he actually looks for certain gospel music for me. Like the small morning, he said to me, look, here's a gospel track. And it was Hit the Road Jack. And it's a gospel choir and it's there's a vinyl out there and it's been discovered by uh, one of the big uh, gospel DJs over here and he's sharing it out. And that's one of the tracks I'm going to be playing on my show with, you know, for the Manhattans. So everyone is going to be able to hear that. But gospel music is very important because everything connects. You've got the church, the gospel music. You've got the Motown, the artists, and it goes on. And, you know, the new generation, that is what they need to learn. It's not all about just Motown, you know, this artist, this track comes here. You've got to know, you've got to go right back to the roots. That's right. That is so true. Because yeah. that is literally everybody, a lot of people, a lot of the trained uh, first of all, you can also tell. You can literally tell. Um, then I'm not going to take it away from the people that are very gifted that never did, um, you know, that never did go to church, but they were very gifted as well. Um, mm-hmm. But you can always, for the most part, tell uh, that a lot of people did start in the church. That was it. It was. It was back then. It was. <laughs> you had to look towards something. To, in order to yeah. survive so it was church it was church for mm-hmm. a lot of people so okay thank you for letting me know hand in hand that that's what uh and, and the reason why you're playing both so I like that I definitely like that yeah wow. it's the lyrics as well it's you connect yourself like with a certain track and lyrics mm-hmm. To songs and I connect myself with how I'm feeling to a, a certain song 
it's like Jimmy Ruffin, what becomes of a broken hearted when I was in a bad relationship, when I broke up, I connected myself with that track because the lyrics to that song was what I was going through at that time. Yeah. So I express myself, even if I'm in a good mood, you know, it, things that come, what comes into me, the staple singers, Oh Happy Days, that comes into my mind when I'm feeling good, you know, and that's gospel. Um, with, you know, if I'm feeling sad, like I say, I'll go to, a, you know, a particular track and think about that. And when it comes to inspiration with Marvin Gaye, the one track that stands out to me is with what Ziola Gay said to me. It was the last song I think she was in the studio recording doing the backing vocals was So I Want You. And that has a meaning as well. You know, there's always a meaning to a certain type of music and a certain artist and that, and the lyrics that they write down, you can connect. Music is for everyone. Music, yeah. you can apply in different situations. And a lot of people, I'm sure, as you spoke very earlier on, uh, when COVID hit, you know, you realize how important music is really to your life and understanding that those artists were not traveling, they were not performing. And it's like, what do I do? It's almost like a part of you just got sucked out. Well, you know, so I get it. I understand. Before we get out of here, because we only have a few more minutes left, mm -hmm. uh, you were awarded in an award. Is that the award that's in the background? Yeah, this is it here. This is um, from Andre. The recognition of what I do for my show. Oh, yeah, so I've nice. got the honors award for yeah for recognition for my Motown Soul show. Wow! Well, congratulations. congratulations! Thank you, thank you. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I wasn't expecting it. It was a big shock to me. <laughs> oh, those are yeah. always the best kind of um, appreciations mm -hmm. where you're never expecting it. And exactly. One other thing back there, you have a guitar back there. So do you play instruments? I can play the guitar. I can play two chords. Uh, the only thing I can play is Horse With No Name by America. That's as far as it goes. <laughs> well, but at least... A little uh, banjo here as well, which my grandchildren like to have a little go on. So they play that. So, um, yeah, it's important. It's like in my house, there's music everywhere. We've got our own studio and it's important. Yeah. Anywhere you look in our house, there's music. <laughs> there's well, instruments, see. everything, tambourines, triangles, maracas, get the kids involved. You just sound like me. I live, eat, breathe and sleep music because that sounds just yeah. like you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, Miss Christina, thank you so much for coming on the Candy Show before we get out of here let everyone know how they can follow you on social media and also how they can find your show and one yeah. thing though make sure that we spell out everything so we know exactly how to get to you yeah sure um on facebook you can go on the facebook at www dot that's facebook dot com forward slash that's Christine Chuckles. That's C H R I S T I N E C H U C K L E S. Uh, the same with the Motown Soul Show for the Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Motown Soul Show. On Instagram, it's Christine Chuckles, how I sp spelled it out before, and the same with Twitter as well at uh, Christine Chuckles as well. So, yeah, you can find me um, even on Google. If you put in Christine Dobbo Mabbott, I spring up everywhere. There's on the images, there's pictures there, everything. You'll find, you'll find me everywhere. Just put in my name, Christine Dobbo Mabbott, and Motown Soul Show, Motown Soul Show and Guests, and also with the TWR, totallywildradio.com. So totally wild is T O T A L L Y W I R E D R A D I O dot com. 
Wow, that is a lot. I want to make sure that we got everything out so they can follow you. So they can yep. definitely listen to your shows because you did say you have two shows. Yeah, you- the show <laughs> goes out the 27th of this month. So it's the fourth Sunday of each calendar month and it's 1 p.m. till 2 p.m. That's on Totally Wild Radio. And I've got a gospel show, which is going to, um, I'm going to get that up and running next month, which will be every Wednesday, six till seven. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I am so honored to now finally say that I have talked to someone from England and I appreciate <laughs> you and your energy. Definitely. You will have my support. So I greatly appreciate thank you. Thank you. I want to say a big thank you for having me on your show. Thank you so much. Well, not a problem. I'm so glad we were able to work out that scheduling because of the yeah. difference. So, all right, guys. Well, once again, thank you so much to Miss Christine. But if you, again, are still on here, what did I tell you in the beginning? Same thing I'm going to tell you at the end. Make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube page. That is capital C and the number two, Candy Productions 2. Make sure that you are also following the official Instagram page, and that's Candy Talk Show. Guys, again, www www <laughs> it's three w's dot candy productions two dot biz like follow sh- share subscribe comment well th- guys thank you so much again miss christine thank you guys thank you. until next time see you later bye thank you